It was a very high pace fight, so not being able to breathe with the high pace, action, in your face, hot fight. Robbie's a great puncher. I think I would consider him as like, you know, the, the hardest hitter to deal with. It was the craziest fight I've ever been in. My first UFC fight, uh, basically the only thing that changed compared to competing outside the UFC was just how organized the company was. I remember outside the UFC, it was like, not so organized. <laughs> But when it came time to fight, when you go to the venue, it was the same thing. Just the exact same operation. You get warmed up, you get told that you're up next, or you're up in 15 minutes or whatever have you, and you go out there and scrap. The first win uh, against Mike, I was actually disappointed because I felt like I had more to show. I had more potential to show the UFC. Uh, I really wanted to to impress. I guess I did because I got a, a big fight after that with Carlos. I remember being a little bit uh, upset with myself because I felt like I had, I had more to show than what I, I, I did. I was super nervous, especially uh, for whatever reason for my fight against Carlos Condit. I remember really feeling nervous in the back room more than a little like um, uncomposed, you know? Everything was rushed in the back room. There was mistakes with my hand wraps. When they wrapped one hand and they had to leave and then they ended up wrapping my hand right before I walked out. The warm up was all wrong and everything was just messed up. And then the energy in there was just like intense, you know? So I remember being super nervous for that fight. The whole fight I was basically on a, an adrenaline dump I never felt before and then um, I was, I knew I was up two rounds on the judges scorecard. I still was like just vibrating off the adrenaline I was, I was dealing with and I just wanted to destroy. So I was very aggressive even into the third round and uh, I was caught with a hook. I can't remember if it was a right or a left hook, but it caught me in the side of the head and the temple here. And uh, I remember everything just leaving me, my adrenaline, and my gas, <laughs> I really just, it was like one punch gassed me out, it felt like, it was a bizarre feeling. Not so much I was like rocked, but it was just like more just like reality set in with one punch. And uh, I was shooting at legs desperately, trying to get uh, control of him, but he just kept shaking me off, throwing me off, and uh, applying a lot of pressure with strikes. and. Until, uh, until the ref stop, stepped in. My first loss was a, a wake up. Before fighting Carlos, I was undefeated. I had all these things in my head about being an undefeated, undefeated fighter, uh, you know, maybe going down in history as like some phenom or something like that. But um, I, I, uh, I, I needed that, that, that taste, that, that experience. It, to teach me, that's not what it's really about. It's not about going down in like the history books. It's the experience and the growth as a martial artist, eating that humble pie and, and, and being able to take the loss as a man, um, you know, be honest with yourself and learn from the experience to get better, to grow. My decision to move to TriStar, basically I had traveled out there since I was 18. I was a little bit frustrated with training partners. I didn't feel like I was I was training like a professional, like the, the kind of professional I wanted to be. So I felt like TriStar held more serious fighters there and it was gonna bring me to the next level. Uh, it was just a bigger gym, more people, people from all around the world. So I, I felt like it was, a, it was where I needed to go at that age. Yeah, it was a big card coming off a loss against Carlos, and spending like almost a year basically uh, at TriStar, you know, kind of developing maybe a, a, a newer style under a different coaching regimen. 
It was a, a big opportunity. Uh, I got put on a main card on one of the biggest cards in UFC at the time. Well, it was the biggest card in the UFC at the time. The atmosphere in the locker room was, you know, there was a lot of TriStar guys. George was fighting, uh, McDessey, uh, me. There was uh, a couple other guys too. I think Yves Jebwen was on the card. So there was a, a bunch of us um, uh, on there preparing in the locker room. And, uh, you know, it was good. It was like a teammate vibe. And I, I like that. Diaz, uh, when I was fighting him, he had a couple of things to say, like uh, he called me a bitch, this, that, but I would just punch him in the face and, and it was the end of it. I mean, I was there to fight and I think he knew it. He was just trying to get in my head. He's looking for that leg, pushing the pace. The suplexes, uh, basically I just, I, I had gotten his back at one point and uh, I felt like his weight was not defending the suplex well, so I mean, I picked him up and uh, I, I actually picked him up straight and slammed him down on his back instead of uh, doing an actual full suplex where I did at the end. But uh, he kept turning his back, trying to get back to his feet, so I would do it again. Turned his back, grabbed him from behind and actually suplexed him the third time. But um, yeah, it's just positional awareness, I guess. I remember the crowd being going crazy over it. Uh, I knew it wasn't really necessarily doing damage, damage, but it was fun. It was, you know, it felt like I was like ragdolling someone, so that, that was a cool feeling. I respect BJ and every other fighter I've ever went up against. Yeah, I don't turn off respect. It's not, not about that. It's just turning on aggression and, and doing what I have to do to that person. Um, just being like, be, I don't know, I, there, there's always respect, whether I knock the guy's face in the first five seconds or if it's a war or if he beats me, there's always going to be respect. I'm, I'm locked into a stare down with somebody, I'm usually thinking pretty aggressive things. Um, sometimes I'm more composed and thinking like, of like, where he's open. You know, sometimes I just like I just want to rip your head off. I don't know. It's always different. I think looking back, I could have been more aggressive in in a lot of situations. But I was, I felt like um, for whatever reason, leading up to that fight, I was like following a, a system. You know, I really was like. I was like uh, kind of robotic a little bit, like looking for. The, you know the square to fit in the, the the square shape. Whereas now, you know, I think I'm a little more uh, relaxed, and I I'm more open to more techniques. Uh, it's just experience. I was really surprised during that fight that he wouldn't go down. I was hitting him with really hard shots. Um, I was trying to be very accurate and pinpoint my shots and you know he was just not going down. He was extremely tough and um, afterwards I was a bit frustrated that I, I, I didn't I didn't maybe go take the extra risk to put him down because I was just so far ahead. You know I had him so badly hurt but uh, again I was a little bit robotic in my um, striking and my, my, uh, my outlook in that fight. You know, I really just felt like I was being unfairly refed in that fight, but uh, nothing against Robbie because Robbie did what he had to do. The first fight against Lawler, yeah, um, it was a close one. You know, I, I, the, the most frustrating part about that fight was my, the referee. I really felt like he ruined the fight. Um, that, you know, what can you do? Um, uh, why, why do I think that is because uh, I would get a takedown and I would get stood up. With basically no, uh, no warning or um, for, you know, ridiculous reasons. You know, I really just felt like I was being unfairly refed in that fight, but uh, nothing against Robbie, because Robbie did what he had to do, you know? 
and uh, I just felt like the ref wasn't doing a good job. But it is what it is, professional sports, and you have to you have to deal with uh, the refing, the judging, things like that. And uh, you know, I felt like I did a decent job. I made I made the contest close, and I you know, it was a hard decision for the judges to make. But I just felt like maybe if I had a fair ref in that fight, it would have been a little bit more clearly in favor for me in the decision. Right away, I was like, get me a fight. I, because I had way more fight in me. It kind of even woke me up a little bit. Just my focus and my energy towards fighting, it kind of reinvigorated my fighting spirit. So in the long run, I guess it's a good thing. I didn't want to go back and fight some guy outside the top 10 or anything, or someone who wasn't relevant. So um, we challenged, uh, we got set up with Damian Maya. Rory's opening up with combinations. The more confident he gets in his takedown defense, the more he's able to put it on Damian Maya. Nice kick to the body. That hurt him. Maya's hurt. Everything we worked on worked perfectly going into that fight. I was in a very hard nosed. Um, mindset leading up to that fight. I wanted to get in there and I wanted to get into a, a good, hard-nosed, in-your-face kind of fight. And uh, all the techniques that we had kind of worked on to shut down Damien, it worked, it worked perfect. The lead up to that event was a lot of media. Um, I remember two weeks before we had to go to New York for like this Reebok unveiling. The week of the fight, I was in Toronto doing press with everybody. It was just, and then before the fight, it was the World Press Tour. It was just so much, so much press and media build up for that fight. It was such a massive card, um, being Connor's world title fight. So it, uh, it was an experience. Uh, I was happy to be a part of it. Uh, me and Robbie aren't, aren't guys to like hype up the fight. Um, you know, we just go in there and we bring it, and uh, we always perform. And I think uh, if people, you know, really paid attention to who brings the heat every time, you know, uh, Robbie's definitely one of those guys. And uh, you know, I'm 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 surprised he, he's not more popular than what he is because the guy is uh, a destroyer every time he gets in there against anyone. Some guys talk and some guys get really, uh, they really get uh, the fans going and getting behind and they can't wait because of the way they talk. But uh, some people just like to, to make it happen when it's the time to get physical and not, not, not verbal. When it was time to fight, we were in the warm up. It was the same. It was the same scenario, same warm up, same everything. I didn't, I didn't feel like it was anything different. Uh, we were in the locker rooms, we did a warm up, we got brought out. It's just when we got there, you know, they do the whole lights thing. It's the Bruce Buffer's going crazy with the, with the world title announcement. You know, it's, it's different energy, especially when it was Connor's big card and there was all the Irish fans going crazy. It was, it was, it was an electric vibe. And then me, um, having my own, you know, nerves about, you know, being, this is my first world title and making it out to be something maybe it, that it wasn't, um, all added up, I guess. I definitely don't have the poetic skills to put it into words or our word. It's just, it's intense, it's intensity, you know, like there's the people around uh, screaming, going crazy, the lights, the energy. You feel the energy when you're in those moments of everything that's around you and everything that it means. Plus just looking down with another, you know, guy who's bloodthirsty and, you know, Robbie Lawler's a serious dude, so it uh, gets you fired up. It's just an, it's an, it's an intense, uh, it's an intense situation when you're in one of those, uh, one of those scraps. Right, you ready? You ready? Get it Robbie tagged him. Yeah, Robbie landed that, yep. Robbie caught him again with that jab. I remember getting my nose broke by one punch and that, me thinking, like, that really sucks. <laughs> Having to, like, you know, I was, uh, it, it, it definitely stressed me out. I was trying to stay composed, but at the same time, it was, every shot was, that was landing was making it bleed a lot more, break a little bit more. 
That was that one two by Robbie, and again. The pain was one thing, it was very manageable, but it was more of the blood in my throat and in my lungs having to deal with the gas. That was, that was a problem. Um, that wasn't fun, not being able to breathe too well. Don't block his nose, okay? Don't block the nose of plastic. Give me the mouthpiece. Okay, give it to me. Breathe, worry. How you feeling, worry? It was a very high pace fight, so not being able to breathe with the high pace, action, in your face, hot fight, you know, you really, it was one of those fights where you really felt the heat of the battle. There wasn't much time to think, it was just all reaction and letting your training come out. It was a crazy experience, um, but that's why I feel I gained so much composure from that fight because it was the craziest fight I've ever been in. So it, it forced me to have to use composure so I could make it to as far as I did. Yeah, he was laughing at me when I was hitting him. I was like, this guy's crazy. <laughs> it, it, it frustrated me, it really did. I remember being exhausted at the end of round four. Like I was basically in survival mode after I had tried to finish him earlier in the fourth um, because I knew I was just, I was suffocating with the blood and I was, I was dealing with a lot of pain and problems. So I was like, okay, let's go all out and just try to, you know, you know throw this final shot or, you know, um, final effort. So after that didn't work, um, it was survival. And then at the end of the fourth, I was, I was gassed, gassed. And uh, I remember him being intense. I remember his energy. He was like, he wanted to kill me. I remember when he, he looked at me. I've seen him in other fights. He stares people down like that and he intimidates them. But I don't like being intimidated by people. Even, even though I was gassed and I, all I wanted to do was sit on that bench, <laughs> uh, I wasn't gonna let him just walk all over me, you know, like stare me down and make me go sit down on a bench like a bitch. So I was gonna stay there as long as I had to until the ref separated it. And uh, that's what I did. I was on my way back to turn. I seen he was doing that to me, so I turned back around with whatever energy I had to, you know, to give it right back. He hits hard, it, uh, you know, Robbie hits very hard, so you, you definitely feel the thudding shots that he gives, but in that second fight, I never actually got rocked uh, in my brain. It was more just like my facial structure breaking. <laughs> so uh, I never really felt like I was getting buzzed with any shots. I never felt like he hit me with anything that was messing up my equilibrium or rocking me. It was more just like he was hitting me and was breaking my bones. Yeah, he was laughing at me when I was hitting him. I was like, this guy's crazy. <laughs> it, it, it frustrated me, it really did. But uh, I think that was a good lesson to learn because uh, that, that, that taught me how to be composed. You know, if you're fighting a crazy person, you know, they might, they might enjoy it when you hit them, you know, and you have to just deal with that, you know. The fifth, it's hard to describe, but uh, he was very accurate, he was very precise, he was bouncing, he, he almost seemed fresh. And I remember just like trying to give the impression that I was fresher than I was, because I was like on my last legs. I'm sure he could, could have sensed it, but uh, I was trying to stay like I was in the fight, I was, you know, I had energy, but I didn't. And he was being very accurate with his left hand, popping me on the nose, just at the end of his left hand, even though they weren't major shots on camera, because of all the damage I had taken, it was like, they were, they were big shots because of all the facial damage in my nose and things like that, all the swelling. So they, they, were, they were affecting me more than the harder shots earlier in the fight, just because of all the damage, all the fatigue, the adrenaline was gone. So, um, you know, that, that was um, breaking me mentally. Um, it was like, it was hard to like stay focused, it's hard to stay hungry when someone's breaking you down precisely, pop, 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 after you know you don't have adrenaline, you don't have gas, things like that. So that's, that's what just at the end just made me you know, take a knee. I needed time to recover. 
How do I sum up that fight? Uh, uh, fun. It was a fun fight. <laughs> Robbie's a great puncher. I think his, uh, his punching power with his, uh, his speed and uh, his volume, I think, I think I would consider him as like, you know, the, the hardest hitter to deal with. Uh, at the hospital there with Robbie, he just uh, said, good luck, uh, are you okay? And I was like, oh yeah, it's cool. And I said, congratulations, and uh, thank you for the fight, and things like that, and that was it. It was, uh, what are you gonna really say? <laughs> you know, it, it is what it is. So, you know, just mutual respect, mostly. Um, my coaches, uh, you know, they were concerned. Um, I think they were, I think, I think they were upset, you know, understandably. Um, but we gave it our best shot and uh, we learned from it. We're gonna come back stronger next time. What I get out of fighting the most, I think, is um, happiness. I think it makes me generally just a happy person to do martial arts and the lifestyle it brings. You know, not having to do a nine to five job, not having to do, do all that because, you know, the only thing I really know is fighting, so I think it's just when you get to express yourself in something you, you truly believe you're meant for and what you're, you're, who you are, it, it's, uh, it's a very fulfilling thing. You know, I'm not too concerned about leaving a legacy or anything like that, um, because this is, I feel like this is a personal journey um, in martial arts. I, I don't. I don't feel like I'm a Bruce Lee, where I'm leaving, uh, leaving things, you know, for people like philosophy or anything like that. I'm, I'm not a Conor McGregor, where people are gonna remember the way you talked. I'm not a Muhammad Ali, you know. I'm not a guy like that. So, you know, this is this has always been just a journey that I've gone through personally. That I, I'm enjoying martial arts. I. You know, I, I guess I'm a little bit selfish like that, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I, I don't really know what I want to leave behind. Uh, hopefully people enjoy my fights, um, they learn from my techniques that I use, and they could use it, and if they're martial artists, they could use it. And uh, if uh, they like the way I talk, hopefully they, uh, they remember me as being an honest, open character.